morning to one and all. So this is Dr. K. Pushparani, Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, MLR East Talk Technology. So today I am going to discuss about uh, automatic theorem proving in discrete mathematics. Coming to the overview, we are going to discuss about what is meant by automatic theorem proving. So what are the rules and regulations for proving whether the theorem, whether the given statement or preposition is a theorem or not and we will understand this topic by taking some examples. So before going to start automatic theorem proving, we need to understand some rules which are regard which are required for understanding automatic theorem proving. So in the case of automatic theorem proving is a system of uh, derivation which consisting of 10 rules. 5 or antecedent rule, 5 antecedent rules and 5 consequence rules, total 10 rules and also axiom schema and also rules for the well formed formulas, sequence and formulas. Based on all these things we are going to uh, prove that the given statement is a theorem or not. First of all, let us discuss about the some basic terminology which is required for the automatic theorem proving. First one is a variables. What is meant by variables? The capital letters called A, B, C, D, P, Q or whatever it may be. All the capital letters are the statement variables which are called as a statement formulas. So, we are going to use the variables in automatic theorem proving. What are the variables A, B, C, D and so on up to all the capital letters in English language are called as variables. Second one is a connectives. So there are five connectives are there. So one is a negation, disjunction, conjunction, conditional and biconditional. All these are the connectives which are used in the formulas. So we are going to give the preference according to their uh, order. So, first we are going to give the highest priority for the negation of the statement after that uh, this uh, conjunction, then disjunction, conditional statement and also by conditional statement. According to the priority, you are going to apply these priorities levels for proving the theorem. Third one is a string of formulas. What is a string of formula? Any formula is a string of formula. For example, P and q. It is defined in some structured manner. That means uh, there are two connect, there are two form, there are two variables and one a connective symbol is there. It is a formula. Any formula is a string of formula. Any formula is a string of formula. For example, if alpha and beta are string of formula, suppose we consider as a alpha 1 string of formula and beta is one string of formula. This formula can be form by using connectives and also by using statement variables. Alpha is a string of formula, then beta is a string of formula. Both alpha beta and beta alpha are also string of formulas. Next, the strings which are obtained by the step A and step B are also string of formulas with the exception of empty string which is also string of formula. Suppose if nothing is also nothing is there that is also one string of formula. So, what is the first rule? The first rule is a variable, second one is a connective and third one is a string of formula. Coming to the fourth one that is called as a sequent. Alpha, beta are string of formulas then alpha tends to beta. Alpha tends to beta. On the top of the arrow mark write S then alpha tends to beta is called as a sequent. Here alpha is called as an antecedent. The formula which is present on the left hand side is called antecedent. The formula which is present on the right hand side is called as a sequent. The sequence are denoted by using alpha tends to beta then sequent S is written on the top of the arrow mark then it is called as a sequent. Next. So, we need to prove that uh, the sequent is uh, true. The sequent is true. How when the sequent is true, alpha tends to beta is true. If and only if at least one of the formulas in the antecedent is false or at least one of the formulas consequent is true. That means uh, alpha tends to beta becomes true, antecedent is false, then consequent is true, then the sequent becomes true. That is the condition. For example, A, B, C, D, E, F is true. 
when it is to a and b and the c implies to d or e or f is true so that means uh, antecedent becomes uh, false consequent is true then the total sequent is true that is total sequent is true next we are going to use some axioms so what is meant by axiom a b c implies to b b or this is a alpha this is a beta alpha tends to beta is a axiom then if it is a sequent that means it should be a sequent sequent means it is also consisting of some string of formulas alpha tends to beta consisting of s on the top of the arrow then it is called as a sequent every sequent is also axiom every sequent is axiom first we need to take the a sequent and a sequent is it becomes an axiom if it is a axiom then it are going to follow some rules every axiom is a theorem every axiom is a theorem when it is the when it is a axiom means uh, at least one of the formula p q implies p at least one of the statement variable is present either left hand side or right hand side. at least one common variable is present on the antecedent and sec antecedent and consequence uh, then it is a theorem it is axiom so first of all it is a sequent alpha tends to beta on s then alpha implies beta becomes a axiom so uh, this becomes a axiom or oh, it becomes a theorem at least one of the statement variable should be common in antecedent as well as consequent then we can say that it is a theorem so to get the common variable we need to apply the rules that is a 10 rules of the system which are to be followed to prove that whether the given system is a sequent or it is a theorem so first of all let us discuss about the antecedent rules so what is the antecedent rules means sir, there are five antecedents because five connectives are there because of five connectives sir, five antecedent rules and then five consequent rules what is the difference between antecedent and consequent rules antecedent rules means sir, first connective then implication connective then implication connective then implication it is antecedent consequent means first implication then connective is a consequent so how we are going to apply alpha tends to beta implies x comma gamma it is a sequent it is a sequent suppose if the given statement or it is axiom is in the form of like this alpha beta comma x then how to apply alpha this x is a given statement variable or it is a statement formula which is present on the right hand side then it will be come to the left hand side negation x then alpha beta may be empty or it may be alpha beta may be empty or it consisting of string of formulas only string of formula means it is a empty is also string of formula and only variable is also string of formula connectives is also string of formula so then gamma the gamma may be empty or it consisting of anything but uh, alpha beta gamma or any string of formulas the string of formula may be empty or it connectives or it consisting of a alone variables then if it is present on the x is present on the right hand side by applying the formula by using antecedent rules of the negation it becomes to the left hand side that is the most important thing second rule is the conjunction this is a conjunction in the case of conjunction if x comma y comma alpha beta comma gamma so what is x y x y or the two string of formula alpha beta gamma may be empty which is present on the left hand side just you have to apply the connective for those x and y x and y then alpha beta may be consisting of the empty or it may be consisting of the string of formula string of formula next so rule for the disjunction rule for the disjunction if x comma alpha comma beta implies gamma alpha beta implies gamma then how to write so we are going to separate the two terms here x is one term y is another term if it is consisting of two values we need to write the two string of formula separately in the case of conjunction so that is a then alpha alpha it are written then x and y should be x and x or y should be coming to the left hand side 
பீட்டா காமா மே பி எதர் ஸ்ட்ரிங் ஆஃப் ஃபார்முலாஸ் நெக்ஸ்ட் தட் இஸ் ஏ கண்டிஷனல் லா இஃப் ஒய் காமா ஆல்ஃபா காமா பீட்டா இம்ப்ளாய்ஸ் நெகேஷன் அண்ட் யூ ஹாவ் டு ரைட் த டூ ஸ்ட்ரிங் ஆஃப் ஃபார்முலாஸ் தென் எக்ஸ்டென்ஸ் டு ஒய் எக்ஸ்டென்ஸ் டு ஒய் த சேம் திங் வி ஹாவ் டு ஃபாலோ ஃபார் தி பை கண்டிஷனல் ஸ்டேட்மெண்ட் ஸோ வி நீட் டு டிவைட் த வேல்யூஸ் ஃபார் த டூ ஸ்ட்ரிங் ஆஃப் ஃபார்முலாஸ் இயர் எக்ஸ் காமா ஒய் காமா ஆல்ஃபா காமா பீட்டா then here also alpha comma beta x comma y comma gamma there is a two string of formulas or two sequences are there from these two sequences how to convert x tends to x by conditional y beta then sequent of gamma so like that we have to divide like that we have to divide now coming to the consequent rules in the case of consequent rules first of all there is a conditional statement or it is implication then negation negation not only negation any connective first of all there is a implication then connective implication then connective like that we have to use suppose if it is x comma alpha tends to beta comma gamma that means sir in the case of negation is applied for only as once variable so if it is in the format of like this then how to convert alpha implies sir, then x will be coming to the right hand side alpha then beta is written like this sir, then gamma is already there so negation x to be coming to the right hand side in case of antecedent rule all negation x coming to the left hand side in case of consequent rules negation will be coming to the right hand side next so coming to the so conjunction so in the case of conjunction alpha x comma beta comma gamma so we are writing two sync sequence we are going to write two sequence because it is a so that is a binary variable so it consisting of a two sequence one is x another one is a y so another one is a y then you are going to write x and y which is present on the right hand side next coming to the third rule for uh, this junction x comma y comma beta comma gamma then we have to write only one string of formula just write x or y which is present on the right hand side so what you are going to observe in the case of antecedent rule every formula is coming to the left hand side in case of consequent rule every formula is coming to the right hand side next in the case of uh, so conditional statement uh, alpha tends to x implies alpha x y or the two separate variables which is to be combined x implies y he is coming to the right hand side here also in the case of by conditional statement we are going to divide the sequent into two formats and we are going to write x implies y that means x by conditional y is coming to the right hand side to understand all these things let us discuss about some examples uh, whether the given system whether the given statement is a theorem or not that is the object so first of all show that p or q follows from p p or q follows from p what write like this so what you are going to prove that this is a theorem or not this is a theorem or not so for proving whether the given statement is a theorem or not we have to start with the sequent we have to start with the sequent first is the first step one so we have to take the implication first step is take the implication next we need to apply the rules so first of all there is a conditional after that con that after that connective is there if it is a conditional then connective conditional then connective we have to go for the consequent rule so according to the consequent rule which rule we are going to apply this is same conditional than or conditional or so apply the conditional or means you have to apply the rule 3 conditional so if it is in the form of x or y that is a p or q whatever is present on the alpha and beta don't cons consider on those we are going to concentrate on p or q how to return we have to separate the terms you have to separate the terms p or q will be separated p comma q so then it is written in the form of axiom so here it is axiom is hold or not how to check whether the axiom is hold or not there is a common variable is present on the antecedent part as well as consequent for so p and q here it is a common variable this axiom is hold if it is axiom is hold then it is a theorem If the axiom is hold, then it is a theorem. Now let us consider one more example. 
Prove that negation Q or P tends to Q implies negation Q. So, what we are going to take? Whatever the statement that has given, write it as a conditional format. Next. So, we need to work on the right hand side. We need to work on the right hand side. Here it is a, we need to take the negation Q or P or Q tends to negation Q. Now, we need to break the statement that is a this statement. So, what is this format is that is a implication and a negation. If it is implication negation, you have to separate the terms that is negation Q is one term, P or Q is one term and P, P and P. Again, there is a we need to refine until no variables are present at the left hand side. Move negation P to the left hand side. So, what is the negation P? Negation P is coming to the left hand side. Automatically, it will be becomes to the negation P. Negation P. Because it is the right hand side, it, according to the consequent rule, it comes to the left hand side. So, then P tends to Q can be moved to the left hand side. We have to separate the two terms. Q is one term and P is a one term. Now, we need to observe. So, that is a Q and Q. That means uh, this Q will be coming to the right side. Negation P will be goes to the right hand side. Then after that Q. So, that is a what are the common variables? Negation Q is a common variable. Negation Q is a common variable. So, then if the negation Q is a common variable which is present on both the sequence that is a left hand side as well as right hand side. Then, then axiom is said to be theorem. So, what we have discussed automatic theorem proving, what are the fundamentals of automatic theorem proving? So, that is say what are the variables, what are the connectors uh, and what are the string of formula, what is meant by sequent, what is meant by string of formula and antecedent and consequent rule. All these fundamentals are required to check whether the given statement is a theorem or not. Thank you.